Hey guys, this is Jeff Culp, the music director at LCBC Church, which is just outside of Lancaster, PA. And this is part two of a video series on how to bounce tracks or loops and bring them into Ableton Live for live playback. In the first video, I talked about the creation of the loops. In this second video, we'll be compiling and bouncing them out of Logic Pro 10. And in the final third video, we'll bring them into our Ableton Live project and set up a song. So if I wanted to, I could bounce every single track here individually. So looking at the horizontal rows of tracks, it looks like I have about 40 tracks or so. And that would just be way too many to play back from Ableton Live in a live setting. Um, too many tracks would be a strain on the playback computer, and you don't want to have glitches or crashes happening live. And the more tracks you have, I found the more just overwhelming it gets to try and manage it all. So I'm looking at the Ableton Live playback template that I created. And a good happy medium that we came up is to have space for up to 14 clips or tracks, um, not including the click track and the reference track, to use in the playback template that I have here. And those 14 can be grouped to play out of one of three stereo outputs, um, and those go to the front of house for the mix engineer to adjust if necessary. And and those three stereo outputs break down into, we've decided, percussion, um, which is our one and two output. Synth is three, four. And auxiliary is five, six. So auxiliary could break down to background vocal parts, an extra synth part. Um, if we are using, say, a string section that weekend, it could be you know, all the string parts that will supplement the live players on stage, things like that. So then you run into the question, so why don't I mix everything down to just a few tracks? Well, the downside of doing that is I wouldn't give the bands flexibility to pick and choose the specific loops they want or don't want. So one way to look at it is I'll try to bounce down together um, tracks or sounds that have the same frequency range and or bounce them down by instrument type. So, for instance, I wouldn't want to bounce down my high-frequency bell sounds with my low synth bass sound. Right now, this project window looks a bit cluttered, and on a bigger project like this, it will be really helpful for me to organize it a bit more before I start bouncing down my loops. And so how I do that is that I want to move tracks that will be bounced down together so that they are adjacent to each other on this main window. So it's easy to just you know grab a track here with a mouse and move it up or down the main window. And, and new to Logic Pro 10, I could uh, select multiple with shift click and drag multiple up and down in the main window as well, which is nice. And the other thing I'm going to do for the tracks that I'll bounce together is color code their regions. So all I have to do is just lasso those regions. I'm going to press shift C to open up the color palette and then just choose a color. All right, so fast forwarding ahead here. Um, I've done all that work, and for instance, here's the pulsating synth. So I got them all color coded, and I have them um, adjacent to each other. So now it's just gonna be really easy for me to bounce this. And if I make a mistake in bouncing and I close Logic Pro 10, and I need to rebounce, I can just reopen the program and you know redo something if I need to. So again, that's a good reason to sort of align these things ahead of time before you start bouncing. All right, so on to bouncing, and I'm going to start with a click track. Now, I don't use the internal logic click. Now, you could. Um, I'm just not a huge fan of the sound of it, and um, we've been using a cowbell sample for a pretty long time, and it seems to have just the right amount of attack to kind of cut through the mix, but also has a little bit of natural weight behind it, so it doesn't fatigue the ears over time. And I'm going to be bouncing three, it to mono four. because I don't need a stereo click. Um, it's going to save me a little bit of hard drive space. And I'm going to lower the overhead load on the CPU of the playback computer a little bit. And I'm using a downbeat and an upbeat portion of the click track on separate channels. Um, both when I'm 
composing and working in the loops here in Logic, and also in the live playback tempo in Ableton Live. I'm going to have a separate downbeat and upbeat. And that's going to give me some flexibility when setting the overall volume and groove feel. So here in Ableton, um, for slower songs, it works better to have the upbeat at One, a similar two, volume or three, just under four. the downbeat. And then as I'm you know, playing a faster song, One, I two, can three, lower the volume of that upbeat kind of to taste or not use it at all. So that just gives me the extra flexibility there. And I also have a count off track or the guide track and that's going to also be on a separate mono track. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to start off by setting my left locator here at two measures before the downbeat of the song. And this is just one of those workflow methods that I've been using for a while, and I do this on every track, on every song. And it basically just gives me room for the count off, which we always have a two bar count off. Or, or, you know, option to use three, two bar count four. off. One, and two, we also, three, uh, that two measures up front also gives the opportunity to have a musical fade in or even a video fade in if I'm doing video sync. Then I'm going to set my right locator point to just after where the song ends. So I can solo the click here in my environment device, or of course you can always just go to the track and solo it there. And again, this little area of faders and buttons, it's not something that comes with Logic when you buy the program. It's something I kind of custom built just for doing this sort of thing using Logic's environment. And I talked about it a little bit in the first video, but I wanted to give you a download link for a version of my own template here, which is going to contain this environment device. And it's also going to have a blank reference channel strip and the cowbell click. So the first track of the click track that I'm going to be bouncing down is going to be the downbeat. And so I'm just going to want to make sure that the volume is up for that and that I have that track soloed. So for me, I have all of the click tracks soloed here with this button. And I'm just going to turn down the upbeat click and the count off. And I can just test that real quick. and also just making sure that I don't have any clipping on my master output. So I kind of have that set up already um, so that when I have my click at unity gain and my master at unity gain that it's at the level I want which is just under full range, um, just a little bit under all the way to the top there on the meters. Alright, so now I'm ready to bounce. Now normally I would open up the bounce window, but to bounce mono out of Logic, it's a little bit tedious, So, uh, but you can do it. So what you're going to want to do is open up your mixer. So for me that's key command X, which I think is the standard key command. And you're going to scroll all the way to the right until you get to your main output, which will probably say out 1 and 2. So it's not your master output, but it's your main output. And then I'm going to go to the top here of the channel strip. And um, these two circles interleaved means it's a stereo track. So I'm just going to click on that, and then it'll make two um, mono outputs. So an output one and an output two, or left and right, however you want to look at it. So it'll just stay selected here on this first one, and that's OK. And all you're going to want to do is press this button here, um, BNC, which is short for bounce. And then it'll bring up the bounce window. So all I need to do is just make my settings. So I will be using PCM here um, and a WAV file. And now I'm going to be using 16-bit for the resolution for the click. Um, sample rate 44.1. Uh, file type that's just standard mono now. And no dithering, no add to project. It's going to be offline bounce. And turn normalize off. Then when I'm ready, I press the bounce button. And I'm going to create a folder. And I can just call it um, Bounce Audio for now and just save it to my desktop. And I will name this file Click Down, or if you want to call it Downbeat, doesn't matter. And then just click Bounce again or press Enter, and Logic will bounce it offline. All right, so then I just move on to the Upbeat Click. So I'll bring the volume down for the Downbeat, and I'll just bring the volume up for this and make sure it's still soloed and go through the same process. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the count off. 
All right, so now on to the reference track. And probably the first thing I want to do before I forget is go to my main output again and make it stereo. So go to this channel strip, go up here to the circle and press the circle. Now it's going to become an interleaved um, output again. Then I'm going to turn off solo for the click and turn on solo for the reference track. Also going to make sure that the volume's all the way up. All right, so I don't need to press that BNC button anymore. I can just open up the bounce window. Uh, I can use a key command. My key command is Shift B. You can also find that command in the menu under File. And the settings are pretty much all the same. Use 16 bit again, and I'm going to bounce it. So I'm just going to bounce it to the same folder that the click tracks are in. So here we have the click up, the click down, and the count. And the other thing I like to do with the, when I name the reference track is I like to put in the BPM in the name. So this is 80 BPM. And what this is going to do, this is going to help me when I um, import this into Ableton. Um, it's just going to remind me of the tempo of the song so I don't have to reopen up Logic to get the tempo. All right, so on to the loop tracks themselves. So the easiest way to do this for me that I found is to basically just lasso those regions that we colored or of the similar tracks that you want to bounce down and just press the S key to solo them. Now the other ways that you can do it, you can go in and you can solo individual tracks. Um, you can mute everything else except what you want to solo, but I found this is a, a good way to do it. Then open up your bounce window again. And all the settings are going to be the same except for resolution. So I'm going to make that 24-bit. And that's what I kind of have internally running here in Logic in my preferences. And that's just going to keep the, the loops at a higher quality because that's what the audience is going to hear. And I could use 16-bit, um, but if I did that, I would want to choose a dither option um, so that it can dither down to that. So I'm going to go ahead and name this loop Bells. Just one other note I wanted to make about bouncing the loops. When you do this, nine times out of ten, you're going to just want to use offline bounce. But if you happen to be using some of the newer plugins that require upsampling to get their desired effect, then you're going to want to use probably real time so that you know what you what you're hearing when you're monitoring it on playback here in logic is actually what it bounces i had a problem here using a plugin called spire where uh, it just wasn't sounding right when i was bouncing it on an offline bounce so i went in and i i chose real time and then it worked it takes a little bit longer but it's worth worth the extra effort to do that to get it to sound the way you want it to all right, phew, gosh, that's a lot of work. But <laughs> we're done with this video. And, um, you know, as you do this, you just get quicker at doing it. This is a bigger project, so I wanted to take a little bit of time to show you some of the different things that can come up when you're doing this. A lot of times you're doing a song that only has, you know, a few loops in the song, so it doesn't take as long. All right, so next video, the third video in this series, we're going to take all the loops that we just bounced, we're going to put them into our database, and then we're going to drag them into Ableton Live and create a song. So thanks for watching.